First up, I might just get you to comment on the momentum we've witnessed in March and whether you think that tells us anything about the direction for the rest of 2022. Good morning and thank you for having us. Uh, it's hard to say exactly, but as you somewhat outline, the two themes going on. So we have, well, we started with the war in Ukraine. I actually noted that then the, the index, stock index, was very much driven by materials and by fertilizer and by steel and zinc and, and nickel, uh, everything that's really uh, fired up by the Ukraine, the price shock, if you will, like a commodity shock that's, that's taking place. But then the defensive team came back. So one is indeed the technology, maybe because of a view that eventually if this war is going to affect the global economy negatively and we're hitting you know, at least a major slowdown, then growth companies like technology should outperform. There's also other sectors like utilities, for example, uh, that have done actually fairly well. Again, a the defensive underlying team. So a good stock market rally in March, a good recovery, but a defensive tone. Ben, the market commentary has been dominated by inflation, just how bad it's going to get, whether we're looking at stagflation or recession, as you highlight there around the positioning. But if we can just bring in Ukraine, because it's been in the headlines for a number of weeks now, mainly from a humanitarian and also security perspective. But as you look at the data now, this is sort of the rubber hits the meets the road type of moment where we're now seeing it as some sort of a price shock here in Europe. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it is a it is a significant shock. You know, the, the data that's come out just now, German and, and uh, Spanish CPI yesterday, and you're seeing today, you will have yeah, Italy and France CPI. It is actually an incredible change of, of, of data. You know, the CPI number is now jumping by 3% on the month. I think that's an extreme uh, change, but that shows the extent of what actually occurs in, in late February into early March. If we're going to not only have a, a war which shut off a lot of the, let's say, um, commodity exports out of Ukraine, it's also the sanctions are playing a major role by taking off the barrels of, of Russian oil out of the market. That all combined affected the, uh, the energy market significantly, and that's now coming through. So it's, in a, it's in a real major change, and it makes you wonder, like, not only that the Eurozone economy is much more at risk than for, for a near-term recession, maybe the US economy is, but also in terms of the, the European Central Bank and the Bank of England, we often say the Fed's behind the curve, but we have the other central banks maybe even being more behind the curve, you know, having to take more action quicker, which, again, would slow down the economy as a result. But I want to get into how central bankers do treat this type of inflation because on the one hand you could argue that it's one off that if there's a, a ceasefire or a peace agreement around the corner that you might, might see some of the, this inflation pressure subside. On the other hand you could argue there is actually no concrete evidence that there will be any point at which we do agree an outcome here so you have to treat it as an ongoing issue. How do you think about uh, the, the, rationale, the rationale here for central bankers? Yeah, we say they're actually boxed in, right? They, they have to look at this conflict as a serious economic issue because as much as the ceasefire is on the way, the shock has already happened. So you're going to deal with an aftermath of high inflation. And at the same time, you cannot over tighten either or you would bring immediately recession into the scenario such that you may end up with really a, a stagflation scenario ultimately. I think this is the real difficult uh, trade-off for central banks. What you're seeing is sort of the, what they try in the middle of the road, lots of signaling through look, communication that allow markets to price in a faster rate hike uh, scenario, so to speak, but, that's, but not execute on that by itself, because if you do, you cause unemployment and, and a contraction economy much faster, and, and inflation not necessarily coming down. I think this is sort of describes the, the stagflationary dilemma that central banks face today.